Iowa Theme Park Podcast number five, Fan Page Guest. It's time for the Iowa Theme Park Podcast with your hosts, Nick McMahon and Jack Salisbury. In this episode, we have a special guest, Joel Erickson, a member of our Adventureland Fans Iowa Facebook group. Thank you for tuning in to episode five of the Iowa Theme Park Podcast. Today, we are going to have a special guest on the podcast with us. We did a contest on the Facebook page, as you all may know, looking for a special guest to join us. I'm Nick McMahon. And I'm Jack Salisbury. And we have Joel Erickson joining us from the fan page. Yeah. Hello. You out there, Joel? It's nice to be here with you guys. Yeah. So, uh, Joel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I know that you've work camped, correct, at the park uh, uh, Adventureland for a couple of years. Is that correct? Yes, that is. Uh, I grew up in Omaha, so I was, so I would always take uh, a trip every summer with my family over to Adventureland. And uh, once I got out of high school, I realized I could take my family's old um, pop-up camper that we hadn't used in like years, and I could go over to Des Moines and start uh, working there. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea, so I went and did that. And I was a ride operator for three years from 2019 to 2021. Okay. And I understand you're going to be actually taking a turn and working for Lost Island next summer, correct? That is correct. I'm moving on to Lost Island. I'm going to be a rides, well, not an attraction supervisor. That's what I'm going to be there. Okay. So I'm not quite a manager, but I'm step a step up from a normal ride operator there. Okay. Is that going to be a work camping type position or... Uh, sort of. Lost Island currently doesn't really offer a work camping program. I just decided to go there and on my own and I found my own housing there. Okay. Very cool. Well, you know, we'd like to start this out. Obviously, we got to know you a little bit here, but we want to know, uh, you have a favorite food you like to eat at Adventureland? It's not so much a food as it is a treat. The buckets of cookies are amazing. I think everybody can agree, right, Jack? It's hard to go wrong with cookies. So uh, what else? I guess just getting to know you a little bit more here. Uh, what's your favorite rider to eventually and either to operate or to ride? Well, my favorite ride to ride would be the monster. It's I'm a roller coaster guy. I really like those. And monster, of course, is the biggest and best one we've got. Uh, as for operating, my favorite ride to operate is the underground, actually. Um, I, I like the theme of it. I, there's lots of opportunities to make jokes and have fun with the guests on that one. Uh, there's not really a height limit on it, so you don't have to deal with as many uh, parents irritated that their children can't go on the ride with them. It's indoors, so you don't have to deal with the harsh weather. And yeah, I just, I just like it overall. So I guess kind of branching off of part of what you said there, uh, what is it, what's it like working as a ride operator at Adventureland? Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's awful if you don't like amusement parks. <laughs> uh, you have to really enjoy what you do to survive in that. That's why they've, it's kind of hard to have a, that, that's why amusement parks don't usually have a super high turnover rate between seasons. But if you like amusement parks, and I search, and I know I do, and I can speak for everyone here that we like amusement parks. It's uh, quite a f fun experience. You get to learn how the rides work and have fun with the guests. And like the guests can be really awesome sometimes. And so in the environment is good too. Like you're, uh, you get moved around every week to a different ride. So it's not like you're staying in the same five square feet every all summer you get to move around and see different things it's quite it's a really good time honestly it feels more like play than work 
you know, that's how I envisioned working at an amusement park. Obviously, I never have, but, you know, I'm always just a guest who comes and enjoys the rides. But, you know, that's kind of how I envisioned it being working there. You know, if you if you like amusement parks, you'd probably really enjoy the job. If you don't, you probably wouldn't, like you said. So, Joel, how long have you been a coaster enthusiast? When I was four years old, this is like back in 2004 or 2005. I'm not sure which came first, but my parents took me to Walt Disney World and I rode Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And I really liked that. And around the same time, my grandma also bought me a big roller coaster picture book. And that also spurred my interest. And I'm not sure which event took place first, but I know the two of those together uh, turned me into a roller coaster enthusiast. And I haven't really left that enthusiasm for amusement parks and roller coasters since. That's very neat. Can you, what was the first roller coaster? I'm sorry, you already said the first roller coaster you ever rode, but uh, first roller coaster you ever rode at Adventureland? Oh, I'm not sure about that because we, we always went there. The first one I remember riding was Outlaw. And I don't believe it had seat belts at the time. So I was like a little kid, just barely tall enough to ride. I remember my uh, my dad was riding with me and he says that I was so terrified. I tried to curl up and hide underneath the lap bar. And he was worried that I was going to fall out. <laughs> I didn't, I think, of course, but <laughs> it's a fun story. Yeah, for sure. I think we all have, you know, that first story. My first roller coaster ever was the Super Screamer, which was, I believe, before your guys' time. Well, it's still around. It's just over in Michigan now. <laughs> well, yeah, that's correct. I'm just saying in, in terms of ad- Adventureland and, and everything, you know, I was hooked after riding that. Then I rode Dragon. And I've been hooked ever since, you know, and I have to agree. My favorite coaster would probably be monster, you know, dragon slayer. It's great, but nothing beats monster. I'm really excited for lost Island to ride their coasters. They're definitely on my list. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to lost Island opening it up. Yeah. I, I can't wait for that one too. Um, especially their launch coaster. Hold on, I'm going to have to pull up the name of it. I can't remember how to pronounce the name. Uh, It's called Matugani, formerly known as Kanonen at Leesburg in Sweden. I've been on a couple of roller coasters like it before over in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and it's a fantastic model, so I can't wait to have one of those over here in Iowa. Okay. Have you ever been on... So you say you've been to Pennsylvania. Have you ever been to Kennywood? I have not been to Kennywood. I've been to Dorney Park and Hershey Park. Okay. Sorry, we're kind of putting you on the spot here with all these questions. No, it's it's fine. I like talking about this stuff. We do too. We all share a love for it. Um, Jack is more into the technical stuff. I'm into the more, I'm a foodie, so I like to talk about the food. That's why I always ask a food question. Oh, uh, have you been to Silver Dollar City then? The food at Silver Dollar City is the best food I have ever had at any amusement park. Yeah, it's kind of a so- it's kind of a sore spot for Nick. He hasn't gotten the chance to head down there yet. Uh, yeah, well, you need I, to go. Every everybody else has except for Nick. I, I haven't had a chance to get there, but it's it's actually on my bucket list. And who knows, maybe a vacation down there this summer. Do not miss the cinnamon bread skillets and cinnamon bread their their cinnamon bread is ridiculously good it's almost i mean it's almost worth it to go there just for the cinnamon bread you don't even have to ride any of the coasters okay sign me up i'm going down there next weekend oh wait they're not open yet so joel any anything you want to talk about thoughts about maybe what's going to come to adventureland thoughts about what's going to come at lost island oh as for For what's coming to Adventureland, I have had this idea of mine that is doesn't really have much merit to it or anything. But uh, when when Monster was announced, they included in the marketing that it was 
uh, worth $9 million. When Phoenix was announced, uh, they included in the marketing that it was worth $6 million, but they never included a figure for how much Dragon Slayer cost. And that makes me think that it was part of a package deal of some sort. So I think they could be working with uh, SNS, the company that made Dragon Slayer more in the future, or their parent company, uh, Sansei, which is a Japanese company that also owns uh, Vacoma. So they could be working with either of those in the future, I think. Of course, that was the old owners, but uh, and not Palace Entertainment, but the deal still could be on. Well, you know, it's it's funny that you say that because it is something that we have actually discussed as you know jack eden and i side conversations have always discussed you know hey adventureland has worked with sns on the space shot on the dragon slayer well what's the possibility that it, maybe one day we could get something like an axis we would love to see an axis coaster it would be really cool if, if we were one of the first ones in north america to get it an axis coaster would be cool but i think since the last two roller coasters they've added have spinning elements to them, it would be better for them not to add another coaster with spinning elements to it. That is a good a good opinion on that too. I think it's kind of be almost hard to go wrong with any SNS coaster, especially any of the newer stuff they're putting out. Same with Vacoma. Oh yeah, of course. I I could see them uh adding something like steel curtain over at Kennywood uh, to Adventureland and Dragon's Plot. It probably could fit there. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should probably stop talking like that because I keep forgetting this is for Iowa theme park fans and not just roller coaster enthusiasts because most people probably don't know what steel curtain is. <laughs> you know, we we talk, we talk, go into pretty in-depth conversations about different coasters you know um and it's perfectly acceptable uh you know some some coasters i i you know i didn't know what steel curtain was until pretty much until we found out that palace bought adventureland and then i started looking more into them and uh, after seeing a video of it i was like man i want to ride that thing you know so i'd love yeah. to have something like steel curtain here so what are your thoughts on uh, Lost Island and what their whole operation they've got going on up there is. When I first heard about Lost Island back in when it was announced in like 2019, I was very skeptical about it because I wasn't sure that they would have a consumer base big enough to support such a massive project like that. But then I looked further into it and they've got a very large water park that's been established for 20 years now going on 21 and they've they're doing pretty well for themselves so i think they're going to be able to pull it off i really like that they went with a european style theme park rather than just an amusement park it's an excellent counter to adventureland because i don't want one of them to go bankrupt i want them to have like fill in their niche their niches in the iowa's tourism industry i see adventureland adapting to the more traditional amusement park role while lost island goes towards the theme park route and of course you got little tiny arnold's park up north uh going for the classic historic park feel and um lost island i i think they're going to do really well when they did their groundbreaking ceremony um they included a map that also not only featured the rides that would be launching this year but it also included a couple of rides that would be uh, future expansions. I don't remember all of the rides that were discussed but I know of uh, four of four of the rides that were going to be future investments. First of all they were going to add a scrambler flat ride much like what Adventureland has um, to, to their the section of uh, Lost Island that's blue with the, I don't remember the names of the tribes. It's the blue section on the map, if, if you want to look into it. And also in that same section, they are going to be adding a River Rapids ride 
and a flying coaster in the future. Of course, that's just the plan as of 2019. Things could have changed, but I still think that they're going to go through with that. So um, River Rapids Ride, there's a lot of different manufacturers they could go with for that. I think they're going to stick with the same manufacturer that has made their Splash Battle and Log Flume Ride to make their River Rapids Ride. And the other thing would be in like the green, like foresty section of the park, but over by Mata, Matu Guni, it's going to be a compact spinning roller coaster. And um, they've got three options there mostly. They've got mock rides, they've got Gerschlauer, and they've got um, Maurer. Now, Adventureland, they've worked with Maurer and Gerslauer before. Gerslauer built Monster and Maurer built Phoenix. So I don't think that Maurer would be a very good candidate. You want, because these companies, they want their rides to be different, or at least their standout rides to be different from the competition. So people have more incentive to visit uh, their park or both of them. So I think that they would go with the mock ride spinner because Gers there are already existing Gerslauer spinners around uh, the Midwest. Uh, there's one in the Mall of America. There's one at Worlds of Fun, and there's one at Six Legs St. Louis. And backtracking to the flying coaster, um, there's only three manufacturers in the world at the moment that make flying coasters. And for anyone who's unaware a flying coaster it's basically a roller coaster where you are suspended underneath the rails and you are lying on your stomach in sort of in a cage or a vest or something and you're like and so when it moves throughout the track it's like you're flying like superman almost uh, so right now there's only three of those there's zamperla uh, with a uh, volair model uh, that they've got. There's uh, Bulligar and Maliard. Um, uh, they've built a flying coaster at the Six Flags in Chicago. It's actually called Superman. And there's Vacoma. And Vacoma is all owned by the company who owns SNS. I don't know why I brought that back up again. So I think it's going to be a Vacoma because that uh, Bulligar and uh, B&M is a very expensive roller coaster. Those cost in the neighborhood of 25 to $40 million each. And the entire Lost Island's only 100 million. So I think they're going to go with a Vacoma launch coaster. And those, those Vacoma launch coasters, there's really only one of them out right now. And it's all the way in Germany. It's called Fly at a park called um, Fantasialand. And it's one of the world's best roller coasters right now. So if Lost Island invested in a Vacoma flying coaster for their park, that would be just insane. Like it, it would be it would be for Lost Island what Monster was to Adventureland. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you hit the nail on the head there. I do think that they will both be able to compete. They have, you know, two different markets, two different um, loyal followers. You've got a lot of folks up in uh, the northern part of Iowa that have been going to the Lost Island Water Park for years. You know, me personally, most people know this. I'm, I'm from Omaha, so still live here in Omaha. So Adventureland will probably continue to be my home park primarily because of uh, the proximity to my home. You know, it's a nice little two and a half hour drive. Uh, for us so we can get up there and make a day trip easier than we can make a day trip to say Lost Island uh, which is about a four-hour drive from my home so you know I I think they're going to compete very very well and um, they're going to cater to their own markets you know when Adventureland opened up its water park they you know they took a little bit of market from Lost Island but obviously Lost Island has been able to continue to compete uh, because they're building this huge theme park now. And like you said there, you know, we're talking two total different parks. Adventureland has always kind of been somewhat lacking in the theming department. Lost Island is just knocking it out as one of the best built 
ground up built um, theme parks in, in the country, if not world right now. They're really doing things right with their theming. So I, I think kind of like you said, we're going to be talking about two different parks, two different kinds of market of people, but both parks are going to have no problem, especially with Palace now owning Adventureland. They're going to have no problem attracting um, the, the people and putting investments into their parks to attract the people. Okay. Well, does anybody else have anything else they want to add or anything? I've been saying it for quite a few years now, and maybe uh, someone at Palace Entertainment is listening in on this podcast. A lot of people would love it if you were to, if uh, there was a single rider line added to Monsters Q. I, I would, uh, I would use that so much. <laughs> and yeah, that's just a personal note of mine. Yeah. You know, I've thought about that a little bit from time to time. It would be. It, I think it would be easy to execute, uh, just paint a line right down the middle, label it single riders. You know, I've, I've been that in that single rider position before, and it does, you know, you, you hate to see that, that train going up the track by itself or, you know, with only a, an extra seat open, but we'll see what they do. So, all right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of the Iowa Theme Park Podcast. Feel free to check us out on Facebook and YouTube and drop a comment and let us know what you'd like to hear on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in to the Iowa Theme Park Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube for updates on future episodes about Iowa Theme Parks. Comment and let us know what you would like to hear on future episodes.